Today we're going to focus on the divisions of the brain, and then we'll specifically look at one of them, the cerebrum. You probably knew it, but your brain contains billions of neurons. The divisions of the brain, I've decided to break this up into four divisions. The first one is the cerebrum. That's the largest portion of your brain associated with higher mental functions and sensory and motor functions. That's also where um, you would um, formulate memories and your personality and intelligence. And that's where reasoning takes place. Second division is the diencephalon that processes sensory input and controls many homeostatic processes. Uh, when we're looking at the diencephalon, we're mostly talking about the thalamus, the hypothalamus, the posterior pituitary gland, and a few other um, structures. The cerebellum, sometimes called like the small brain that coordinates muscular activity. And then the brain stem, that's the midbrains, the pons, and the medulla oblongata that coordinates and regulates visceral activity. So that's um, activities like in your intestines and heart and lungs, things like that. And it connects different parts of the nervous system. So we'll look at all four of these, but in this video, we'll just focus on the cerebrum. Before we get specifically in the cerebrum, let's look at the four divisions on this picture. So the cerebrum includes all of this stuff right here. The diencephalon includes this stuff sort of um, in the middle, if you will. It's the thalamus, the hypothalamus, the pituitary gland. The brain stem, that includes the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla oblongata. And then the cerebellum is this structure here, it looks like the smaller brain, kind of. So the cerebrum has a few parts to it. Like I mentioned, it's the largest portion of the brain, and it consists of two cerebral hemispheres, the left and the right. That's separated by something called the longitudinal fissure. The cerebrum has ridges, they're called gyri, one of them is called a gyrus, and grooves um, called fissures, and sulci, or sulcus, if there's just one of them. And the cerebrum also includes the corpus callosum that has nerve fibers that connect the hemispheres of the brain together. Cerebrum is made of four lobes, the frontal lobe, parietal lobe, temporal lobe, and occipital lobe. There's a thin layer of gray matter. That's the most superficial part of the brain. That's what you look at um, in pictures sometimes. The outer part's called the cerebral cortex. And that's where you have many of the neuron cell bodies. Remember, they'd be unmyelinated, the gray matter. And then deep to the cortex, or in the subcortical region, that's where you have white matter. And that's, of course, made of myelinated axons. All right, let's look at all those things we just talked about. So here's the four lobes, the frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe, and temporal lobe. You'll notice that these lobes um, correspond identically with um, the bones of the skull. All right, here's that longitudinal fissure that we talked about that separates the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. And remember in the middle, you can't see it, but there's a corpus callosum that connects the two hemispheres. And these grooves, one of them is a sulcus, and multiple are called sulci. And then the ridges, this would be a gyrus, this would be another gyrus. If you have multiple gyrus, you call them gyri. And then we have a few that we'll, we'll memorize. One is the central sulcus. This is a great picture that shows the cerebral cortex here, the gray matter. And then you can see that right deep to the gray matter in the subcortical region, you have the white matter. These are the myelinated axons. So the cerebral cortex is gray matter, so that's neuron cell bodies. And then the white matter below it, that's myelinated axons. Here's the corpus callosum. The corpus callosum is considered part of the cerebrum. Remember, the cerebrum is all this stuff out here. That includes the corpus callosum. Here's the corpus callosum on an actual uh, cadaver brain. So here it is. These are axons that connect the left and right hemisphere. Here it is again. This is looking at a mid-sagittal view. This would be looking at a frontal view or coronal view. Notice how um, these curves might be a little confusing, how this sort of curves front to back. But here we sort of see it curving left to right. 
Um, so the corpus callosum is a three-dimensional structure. It's not just a thin band. It actually extends left and right um, to both sides or to both hemispheres of the brain. If you look at um, this third picture, you can see how we're able to reconcile those two pictures. So it curves front to back, but then it also curves sort of left to right. So depending at the section that you're looking at, whether it's a, a sagittal section or a frontal or coronal section, it looks differently, but this is how it looks sort of overall. Here's a great um, artist rendering of the corpus callosum here in red. You can see the three dimensionality to it. And then the cerebrum doesn't really include these ventricles, but we talked about these ventricles before. Remember that these are filled with cerebral spinal fluid. I just wanted to show um, the two of these sort of juxtaposed with each other because there's lots of internal structures in the brain. And, and these are prominent ones, the corpus callosum and then the ventricles. All right, let's continue our study with the cerebrum by looking at some select structures. So we have this sulcus here. This is the central sulcus, and that divides, or that separates rather, the frontal lobe from the parietal lobe. And also just anterior to the central sulcus, this is the primary motor cortex, or this is where um, motor functions are processed. And then just posterior on this gyrus, we have the primary sensory cortex associated with, um, with sensory information. And then back here on the occipital lobe, um, this is the primary visual cortex. So visual images are processed in this region here. So remember this was the central sulcus, separated these two lobes. And then we also have the lateral sulcus which separates the frontal and parietal lobe from the temporal lobe. And then we have two additional areas, which I want you to know. We have Broca's area. Broca's area is associated with the formation of speech or speech production. And Wernicke's area is associated with understanding speech or speech processing. So this would be like the spoken word. This would be like understanding words. So what we just looked at there, the central sulcus separates the frontal lobe and the parietal lobe. The anterior gyrus is called the primary motor cortex, and the posterior gyrus is the primary sensory cortex. We have the lateral sulcus. Remember that that separated the frontal and parietal lobes from the temporal lobe. And we have the primary visual cortex that was located in the occipital lobe. And that's highly specialized for processing information about static and moving objects. So information that your eye takes in um, gets transduced or, or made sense of in the, in the primary visual cortex, gets integrated there. Broca's area, that was a spot in the left hemisphere of the frontal lobe, and that was associated with language production. Oh, sorry, underlying production. So that's making speech. Wernicke's area, that's located in the left hemisphere of the temporal lobe. That's associated with language processing or the understanding of language. So here they all are again. Here's the lateral sulcus. Here's the central sulcus. This is the primary motor cortex on this gyrus. And on this gyrex, gyrus is the primary sensory cortex. Here's the primary visual cortex. Now those two other areas associated with speech. We have Broca's area, which is speech production or speech formation. And we have Wernicke's area, which is the understanding or the processing of speech. And you can see on a, on, on a non-cartoon brain, on a real brain, um, these structures would be more challenging to identify, um, but it does uh, parallel nicely with this. So take a moment to figure out all those landmarks on here and do the best you can.